J.J. Thompson came along and uh, figured out some things that Dalton didn't. If you recall, Dalton thought atoms were um, spherical in nature, and he thought that there was really nothing uh, in them, and they couldn't be divided. <clears throat> Thompson came along, and he blew some holes in that theory. Uh, through an experiment I'll show you in a minute, he figured out that uh, there are little parts of an atom uh, known as electrons, and they have a negative charge. So there's a negative charge in an atom. It turns out that overall, uh, there is no charge in an atom. So an atom itself doesn't have a charge, but pieces of it are negative. So then he figured out, well, if there's negative pieces, there must also be positive parts. And so he uh, also discovered that atoms have a positive section. And so he put together a model of an atom that we uh, now call the plum pudding model. And that just shows the atom as having uh, this, this round part would all be positive and these little tiny negative sprinkles throughout. So now I'm going to take a minute to try to show you how we figure that out. All right, here is what Thompson did. He uh, built a tube, a, a glass tube, and he ran an electrical current through it. So here he ran an electrical current. Now you got to remember the smallest known thing in uh, before Thompson, which was Dalton, was the atom. Okay, so we have this thing called the atom. We don't think there's anything smaller. And uh, by the way, the hydrogen atom is the smallest known atom. It's still that today. And so overall, the atom doesn't have any charge. So for example, if I uh, held a positive charge right here, it wouldn't have an effect on the atom because the atom doesn't have a charge. Or if I held a negative charge right here, it wouldn't really affect the atom because it doesn't have an overall charge. So you got to keep that in mind, okay? Now there's a couple ways that could be. An atom might not have any charges in it, or it could have like one plus and one minus charge in it. Those would cancel and have no overall charge. So if I had a positive charge here, it might not affect the atom. Okay, back to Thompson. So what he did is he um, shot this beam through this glass tube. And you would expect the, the beam just to go straight. He couldn't actually see the beam, but he could see where it hit at the end here. And so you would expect it to go straight, but that's not, in fact, what happened. When he put a positive charge up here and a negative charge down here, what he found is the beam actually bent towards the positive. Well, what does that mean for... Uh, the beam. Well, that means that the beam must have been, of course, negative in charge. That's why it bent up towards the positive. So he discovered these negative charges. Now, what's more about it is that based on how much this bent, now imagine if this beam is like a semi-truck with a lot of mass, it wouldn't be affected very much by that positive charge. But if this beam is really, really tiny, like a, like a little mosquito or something, and it goes flying through here, it's going to be affected a lot by the positive charge and bend it a lot. So using some math, he could figure out the mass of, this, of the particles in this beam as they bent up, based on how much it bent. And he figured out that the mass was like 2,000 times less than that of a hydrogen atom. And so he figured out that these negative charges probably were actually inside of an atom. So he had to rethink what we thought about atoms, and he came up with what we now call the plum pudding model. And he said, okay, Here's an atom, and I just discovered these little tiny negative charges that are really small. So he envisioned a bunch of negative particles, but an atom itself does not have a charge. So if I got all these negative charges, there must also be a positive charge. And so he kind of figured out this whole circle was probably positive with little tiny negative sprinkles throughout. And today we would call that the plum pudding model. 
And so again, here's Thompson's experiment summarized, and uh, thank you for listening.